So Google is back and they're gathering momentum. They have potentially changed the face of AI software development and agents via the A to A protocol. I've been researching these topics for the last few years. I think this one's exciting. In the next few minutes, I'm going to give you the key takeaways you need to be aware of as a developer and as a software entrepreneur. Huge announcement from Google today is the agent to agent protocol or A2A. So what the heck is this? The basics of A2A is a protocol that allows agents to communicate with each other, securely exchange information and coordinate actions. What I love about this is the open source nature. Of course, this is the only way this is going to work. Make it open source and make sure everybody can get on board. They're even calling out the support for MCP servers and even talking about OpenAI's integration with the system as well. So how does all this work in practice? So let's say I'm hiring for a staff software engineering position and attached is the job description. You can see the thinking that's happening here. It's going to initiate the agent protocol to discover agent capabilities. So it's going to interrogate all the different agents that are available through some kind of a marketplace, I assume. And then they've decided on using the sourcing agent which seems like the best option. So this is what I've been talking about for the last year. It's the agentic web. It's a movement away from SaaS applications to a world of lots of different agents in front of different services. So if you have an existing service or SaaS or anything else like that, you're going to want to put some kind of an agent in front of it so that other agents begin to operate with your business. So next up, we have a collaboration step. So this is the handshake period where we're deciding how we're going to interact with the agent. That seems to involve some level of human in the loop. Maybe in the future, it goes directly to work in an agent to agent sense where the human doesn't need to be involved. But we're calling this the collaboration step. Where does A to A sit in the big picture of the agentic landscape? Well, let's take a look. So A to A is not trying to replace existing frameworks like Crew AI, Autogen, Langgraph, OpenAI, Anthropic. They all have their own variations on how you get agents to work in a framework. A to A does not replace that. It's the communication protocol between. So you can see here, you might have Crew AI or Langgraph or something here that helps get your agents to work together. You usually have a director or an orchestrator agent at the top which helps manage the task or the process, and it has local agents which work with tools. And that's where MCP protocol comes in. There are many existing applications out there that have different services that you can run. So MCP is being offered here as a solution to the tools problem. How can all these agents and frameworks use tools in a seamless way? And at the top of the scheme here, we have the protocol so that these agents can communicate with other agents. And I assume you'll have your own director agent, which will reach out to multiple different agents to carry out tasks. The big picture here is we end up with the internet of agents. We're less reliant on us working within SaaS applications, and we're moving to a point in time where we work in natural language and more basic interfaces to instruct an agent to carry out a task. And it goes and it works with all these different sub agents, which might be existing SaaS applications through their agent interfaces to get work done. So you enter in your first prompt. In this case, I'm saying a tipping calculator to help you calculate the bill amongst friends. This is really basic uh, and it's one of the defaults that it suggests, but it'll give us a sense for how this works. The first thing it does is it creates this app blueprint. It's almost like its idea of what it's going to build, the features it should put in place, uh, style guidelines, typography, etc. And this is pretty much how we should work with AI in the first place. We give a seed prompt, we tell it not to implement anything, we tell it to suggest uh, a way forward, and then we curate that, change that, and then go, come ahead come out with a plan that we want to move forward with. So I'd have a, I didn't have any changes to this. So I just said, go ahead and prototype this application. And then it goes and goes into the implementation phase. So we have the opportunity here to prompt further in this interface, but then you can actually go and edit the code as well. So here we are in Google's IDX. So this is essentially a fork of VS Code, like every other 
tool that we've used, including cursor and windsurf. So you're going to be very familiar with the layout. Over here on the left hand side, we have the file manager, you have your extensions and your source control via Git. And then you have a preview here and then you have access to directly chat with your AI and the model. So all exactly the same as what we've seen in Cursor and Windsurf before. And all our code is listed here on the left. What's interesting to me is I didn't prompt this app to create an XJS application, but it did. If you look at the UI setup here, we've got all these different components ready to go, not all of which are used within this application. So it seems like what they're doing here is front loading a lot of the common components and interface pieces so that Gemini can understand how to progress forward. It's a way of putting some rails on the AI and the project. Some other nice features here, you can run Lighthouse, which actually performs some performance checks for you. You've got your web console here, just like any other editor, and you have the ability to set up hot reloading in terms of your server so that any changes that you make, you're going to see instantly. And when I'm finished, I can go ahead and publish my project as well. Again, this is an advantage of using these kind of cloud-based tools. You can spin up containers for our Next.js application and then deploy it to an address on the web without us having to uh, work with GitHub or Vercel or any other tool like that. I like to have that control for many different reasons, but in terms of prototyping and getting stuff built really quickly, this is really quite powerful.